Hi, my name is Bert Boland and this is Bert's Screencast of the Day. Today, part 3 in the series Natural User Interface. We saw the other day and the day before how um, punch cards went to VT100s to um, um, disk as an icon, as a, a pong, as a touch game. Uh, from a command line interface to a GUI interface, uh, to a graphical user interface, to a natural user interface. And, um, and, I, and I told you about how the punch cards are actually used for uh, programming, in this case Fortran, an old uh, uh, computer language, um, uh, mainframes or computers in general. Um, what I wanted to say is that um, the punch cards, if you go back one slide, it's 80 times 24, and that's exactly the same as a modern read. Five, ten years ago, a computer screen had. It had set the teletypes, had the same video set, 80 columns as a standard width. Why? Big Blue made the standard of the 8024 punch cards, what punch cards before, and they made it. And why did they choose 80? And if they chose 80 100 years ago, why are monitors still 80? It all goes back to 1880. There was a census, and um, uh, in America they counted the, the, the people, um, and they wanted to transport the, the cards um, where the, the notes were in, um, in, in a Pony Express, and they had uh, boxes like that. So they put the, put the cards in the boxes, and then they could be taken to a central place. They want to reuse the boxes that were already there, and the boxes that were already there were there to transport dollar bills and the dollar bills back then were this size not the current size but this size so due to the fact that a dollar bill in 1880 had a certain size that's why our punch cards have the same size because in a pony express they could be taken in the same boxes and given that size this was the highest density of uh, the number of dots or punches that that could be read by a computer so what we learn from this is one, trivial decisions have a very long impact, and two, the legacy is literally forming our future. And the legacy is getting shorter for the future that's getting faster. But still, if you think about it, a dollar bill is a dollar bill in 1880 is, is defining how we look at our screens. So uh, we, we the lessons we learn from this is that will be having unnatural user interfaces for a very long time, even if technology can, can, can progress faster. Another example, the original CD would have the same di diameter, diameter as a, a, a compact cassette, uh, 11.5, but it didn't. And um, it, ha it is exactly 68 minutes, so it's a bit bigger, and it's 68 minutes, at least the urban legend goes, because Sony, one of the two partners who uh, wrote the Red Book, the standard where uh, and the CD was defined in. Um, he was a fan of Beethoven and he wanted to have the ninth of Beethoven performed by the London Orchestra and it was 68 minutes and he said it has to be that size that that piece of art fits on the CD. The other thing is that um, the, the, the hole in the CD is exactly the size as a uh, of a double chair, a Dutch dime if you would like, um, uh, back in the pre-Euros time. Um, Philips was the other inventor of the uh, CD and uh, the, the, the guy who invented it threw the uh, double chair, the, the dime, on the table and said this is the most uh, easy part of our decision process, the whole will, will be this size. So Dutch 10 cents to Beethoven, still impacting how we uh, look at technology. Here's another example. Um, back in the beginnings of the, the typewriters, we had different uh, typewriters. Any typewriter made his own decisions on where the, the, the letters would be. After some time they found out that uh, if you hit certain keys, the, the, the hammers will hit each other. So they looked at the English language and decided that the T and the H have certain um, uh, probability of hitting each other. So they did it, they spread them out. And here you see what the probabilities are for the language in England. So given the fact that we have um, a physical constraint in an English language, not the most, lang uh, most uh, used language in the world, we still have an iOS or an Android keyboard with touch where the Q is on top and the M is on the bottom. No logic other than legacy has a long time before it goes away. So that's it for this episode. Next episode we'll take a deeper look into the user interface that 
we call natural. I have some examples and uh, we'll play around with my uh, Leap interface as well as Siri to give you some uh, deeper insight. For now, take care and see you tomorrow. Bye.